This is the first blue pigment successfully invented in over 200 years. It's called Yemen Blue, and unbelievably, I got my hands on some, and we're gonna review it. Now, there are two things throughout history that the humankind has always had trouble finding. First one being aliens. Man, that would be the day. And the second thing is a blue pigment. It's surprisingly hard to find a blue pigment. Unlike red, yellow, brown, all of which are easy to find in nature, that's not the case for a vibrant, bright blue color. And there's been a whole entire host of flops throughout history where people have tried to make blue pigments. Starting with the ancient Egyptians, they had Egyptian blue. It was used all throughout ancient Egypt and ancient Rome, just this beautiful, prolific, light blue color. And of course, during the Middle Ages, they were like, uh-uh, we don't want any of that science devil magic around here. And they proceeded to either lose or destroy all instructions of Egyptian blue and how to make it forever. And still to this day, scientists don't exactly know and will never know 100% how Egyptian blue was ever made. The next blue color that came out was in the Middle Ages. And if you've played Minecraft, you already know what's coming. Lapis Lazuli. And it's a good color, it's still around today actually, but the problem with it is it's only mined out of a random cave in Afghanistan and it has a limited supply. <laughs> and in current day, they do make it synthetically, but during the process of making it, it releases an air pollutant called sulfur dioxide. <laughs> in fact, when they make ultramarine blue, they actually have to like monitor it to make sure only a certain amount of air pollutant comes from it. So that's great. <laughs> Then in the early 1800s, we get my personal favorite, cobalt blue. And throughout history, and even now today, it happens a lot with potters. If you don't wear the right protective gear and you inhale a lot, a lot of cobalt blue, you can actually get cobalt poisoning. And don't get me wrong, not every blue pigment is bad. Like for example, there's cerulean, which is a really nice pigment, but it's kind of transparent and it leans more towards turquoise, not a true blue. There's Prussian blue, which is a really nice and deep blue color. And for the next 200 years, that was all the choices we had. Until 2009, that all changed. At Oregon State University, a lead chemist named Mas Subramanian and his graduate student, Andrew Smith, were just messing around, testing out the electronic properties of manganese, as one does. So in an oven, they mixed up the following ingredients. They let it bake overnight at over 2000 degrees. And in the morning, when they opened up the furnace, they saw a never before seen brand new pure blue pigment. Now, unlike all the other pigments throughout history, Yemen blue is absolutely incredible. Firstly, Yemen blue, it blocks out UV rays, meaning if you were to paint it on a house, it would never fade in the sun or the color will never fade on a painting. It's also incredibly resistant to high and low temperatures up to 2000 degrees. So unless you're gonna like yeet the paint into the sun, it should pretty much last you a lifetime. It's simple and safe to manufacture. It's safe for humans to work with. And recently here in America, the EPA announced that it's safe for the environment. Therefore putting it on the markets, not just for construction use, but also for us artists too. Now, as you can imagine, because it literally just came out and just got approved, it's pretty hard for us artists to get our hands on. As of right now, if you're an artist, there's only three ways that you can get it. The first one is through Golden Paint Company, and you can't just order it online. You actually have to call a special hotline, tell them what you want it for, and if they approve you, they have to custom make it for you. So yeah, obviously I'm not cool enough to be on the special VIP golden paint list, so we're gonna put an X in that. The second way is through a website called the Italian Art Store. And this one is literally sold out all the time. And if you do happen to log on and they have it in stock, in the United States, it's gonna cost you $179 for one ounce of paint. Capitalism, baby. And this leads me to the option that I was able to obtain the paint. It's a lot easier to buy the pigment itself, especially on bulk. So people have been getting the pure pigment itself and making the paint themselves. And if you're lucky, you might be able to find it on Etsy, which I was beyond lucky to find it. And after about three, four weeks of waiting, it finally came in the mail. And guys, I'm about to show you what Yemen Blue looks like for the very first time. There it is. Oh, that is so cool. The seller sent a little free 300 pound cold press watercolor paper. That's that's pretty nice. Shoot. Unfortunately, I accidentally kind of like cut through a little bit of it, but hey, it's still working really nice. That's 
cute, comes with a little card with Yin Min Blue. Oh, it's tiny. Oh, it's magnetic. Oh, that's a really nice little touch. Now, like I said, right now, it's kind of difficult to find Yemen Blue because it's just so new, so rare, and just released. So from the seller that I purchased from, this little guy right here of authentic Yemen Blue cost 45 bucks. Uh, this one by far is the most expensive paint I have literally ever bought in my life. And plus it's watercolor, which lasts a really, really, really long time. So I'm probably barely gonna be able to even make a dent with how much of this that I'm gonna use, you know what I mean? Now, my very first impression of it is that it looks a lot like ultramarine blue, like that same really pretty deep blue, except it's a little less purpley, like it's a little bit more of a neutral blue. Really, really pretty stuff. So let's go ahead and test this little guy out. I love that. I love how it just like falls. <laughs> Wow, this color is like so insanely blue that I'm gonna have to, and I rarely do this on my channel, but I'm gonna have to take a picture, Photoshop it to what my eyes see, that way you at home can see what it looks like. All right, I actually went to my local craft store, picked up some of the most common blue pigments that I've mentioned throughout this video, and we'll go ahead and compare them to Yin Min Blue. I really wanna see how close or different these are all together. So yeah, let's go ahead and see what that's all about. Starting with Bob Ross's favorite, Phthalo Blue. Kind of like oceanic turquoise in comparison. Next one will be manganese blue hue, which I don't think this one actually has any manganese in it since, yeah. Manganese? I don't know, I have the hardest time pronunciating this pigment. It is so hard. Oh wow, this one is like pure turquoise. And for you guys who've seen my rarest paint colors in history, you guys know the sketchy past behind it. Here's cobalt blue. Oh, oh man. Oh my god, that's like the same exact thing. Oh my god, it looks literally just like cobalt. Oh my gosh, those are like identical. There is definitely a slight difference. The cobalt is a little bit, like just like the tiniest little bit more yellow. And of course, as I mentioned, it has like way more depth, but I mean, they look literally almost the exact same. All right, next up will be Prussian blue. It's like black inside the palette, ooh. Oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> as far as personal preferences go, I prefer the Prussian blue just because I, I like that color. But still, as far as like a perfect blue, Yinmin blue is still way more blue. And then lastly, we have ultramarine blue, which I thought this one was gonna be the most accurate, but we'll see. Oh yeah, that one's like way different. It's way more purple. So I actually do have one more dupe for you guys. And this one is actually kind of unexpected and supposedly this one might be the most accurate one. And you right now actually might have this. Crayons. <laughs> In 2016, Crayola got rid of their famous dandelion color. I personally was never a fan anyway, so goodbye Irene. And they replaced it with a new color which they modeled directly after Yin Min Blue called Blutiful. I keep saying Yin Min Blue, Blutiful, Blue this, Blue that, and it's like I'm losing track of all the times I'm saying it. Like it doesn't even sound like a real word at this point. It sounds like fake. I don't know how to describe it. Having a blue crisis. Um, blue da ba dee da ba okay. <laughs> all right, so here's Yin Min Blue, and here is Blutiful. It's dark. <laughs> And even whenever you compare it to like the darkest swatch, it still isn't as dark as, well, I guess it kind of is. So yeah, in my opinion, it's not exactly 100% spot on, but I'm not gonna lie, Crayola does it again. It's actually pretty close. And I think that's really cool that they put a brand new pigment color into crayons, you know? Hi, I'm back again. 
Now, usually at this point, I would jump straight into the drawing portion, but there's something very important that you need to know about. Yinmin blue is so blue and it radiates so much blueness. <laughs> and my camera actually had a hard time color correcting. So it saw so much blue in the lens that it would transfer constantly to yellow. It's such a true blue that my camera can't even pick it up correctly. You know what I mean? So yeah, here's the drawing process. Okay, one last time, hi. <laughs> First of all, I don't know how I feel about this painting. I kind of like it, I kind of don't. I'm like really in between on it. But what I am sure about is this is literally one of the blue, can you even see it? This is literally one of the bluest blues I have ever worked with. I mean, just looking at it under the sun, what the camera picks up, and it's such a mind trip to think that this pigment will last literally forever. And I absolutely can't wait for the day that Yinmin Blue becomes a mainstream pigment that you can get literally anywhere, like at Walmart or whatever, you know? That's gonna be so cool. If you like art history slash weird art supply videos, be sure to subscribe. And yeah, with that being said guys, I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you next video. Bye!